did you get the idea for this super PAC? Well, it really arose out of a sense of frustration, right? The sense that Congress wasn't working. Why wasn't it working? It, this wasn't a big insight. Everyone sort of seemed to know this, but um, yeah, we, so we started investigating ways to, to get engaged, ways that didn't require going through the Democratic or the Republican establishment. And, uh, and we hit upon this super PAC as a, as a vehicle. You're conservative, but you say that this super PAC is Nonpartisan. Sort of a conservative communitarian, right? Uh, I don't really fit into either, you know, either party. And, uh, and look, the, the problem in Congress is bipartisan, right? I mean, the mess we have isn't the result of one party or the other. It's the two, the two parties working together who sort of made the mess. So, uh, so yeah, we, we, have, we felt like we had to go after both parties. What are your criteria for deciding who you're going to go after? So we look at four things. First of all, only safe seats. We're not looking to shift power from an irresponsible Republican Party to an irresponsible Democratic Party. So we're only competing where there are safe seats. And that's like 85% of the districts are either Republican or Democratic. The second is we're going after more long-term incumbents this cycle, people who've been there at least six, eight, 10 years. Um, the third is they have to have a credible challenger. So someone that, I mean, Congress is a serious job. Right, and the, the people who are running have to be serious candidates. And then the third is we poll in their district. Do the people in their district, when they know what the incumbent's been doing, want to reelect them? And if the answer is no, we engage. A lot of cases, the answer is yes. The people are fine with what their incumbent is doing. We don't engage in those races. What's the problem with incumbency per se? Isn't it good to have some experienced folks in Congress who know what they're doing? Absolutely. It's not a problem with incumbency. It's just incumbents shouldn't get a buy in the election process, right, where they don't really have any competition. They, they should have to compete, and the voters should have a choice in every election. And what we found was that primaries were where the decisions were being made, and primary elections, not the general election. And, uh, and by and large, incumbents were getting a buy in the primary. So we engaged and uh, tried to level the playing field so that they had to compete. Have you found suitable challengers in a lot of these races? In, in a few of them, right? I mean, we can't recruit challengers as a super PAC. It, it's just not what we do. Um, so we take the cards as they're dealt. And there are good challengers, but not a lot of them, right? It's a 100 to 1 shot to beat an incumbent in a primary. So, you know, it's, we would like to see more challengers, and maybe next cycle we will when they see that it's easier to beat an incumbent in a primary. Why do you think incumbency is so powerful? Why don't, why don't more incumbents get challenged? Well, there's a huge difference in money, right? So an incumbent has all of these folks in, you know, the lobby and, the, you know, the, the uh, special interests that will pour money into their campaign coffers. And an incumbent or a challenger comes in and has to sort of chip away at that a small amount at a time. And, you know, so if an incumbent has a million dollars and a challenger has 50,000, they just can't, they can't win. They can't get their message out. The challenger can't. So the way you see it, putting more money in actually levels the playing field rather than making it more unequal. Yeah, it's, it sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? But um, look, if you started off where both sides were equal, then it, you wouldn't need to level the playing field. But if you start off where the incumbent has a million dollars in the bank and the challenger has 50,000, if you don't do something, the incumbent is just gonna overrun them. So we step in with the independent expenditures through a super PAC and we basically level the playing field. Do we get it all the way level? Most of the time we don't, but it doesn't have to be all the way level in order for an incumbent to lose. How many races are you getting involved in this campaign season? So we'll get engaged in as many as we can. If the money comes in to support more engagement, we'll, engor we'll, en we'll engage more. Uh, so far, we've engaged in seven races, and we've won three. So our batting average is like 428, which ought to get us in the Hall of Fame, right? <laughs>